today we're going to stroll through the bush and see if we can get a fox while we're at it. Well, to tell you the truth, it's going to be going after foxes and seeing what we can find along the way because that's what we seem to find a lot more of. But don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. Now I'm going to be taking my throw stick or boomerang out with me again and I do manage to throw it off at a fox but uh, you'll see how that turns out if you keep watching. I managed to uh, find quite a few natural and native phenomenon again while I'm out and I just had a fairly nice afternoon so stick with the episode and I hope you enjoy it. So this is the fox whistle that we're using today. It's quite a cheapy, but it sounds very similar to a rabbit that's in distress. And don't worry about the wind getting on the microphone because it's driving me crackers too. So I'm doing a voiceover. Now, this whistle sounds very similar to a rabbit in distress. And it's basically two bits of thick plastic. And in the middle there's, I think, a bit of aluminium that is between them and you blow wind across those when um, you squeeze it between your teeth and it sounds a lot uh, like a rabbit so just have a listen to see what it sounds like here now I'm not the best at blowing it because I've hardly used it the cameraman he actually blows it on this episode for me so I'm just standing there and watching out for foxes as the sound is going on. So uh, let's go give it a test and see what it's like. There's a good creek line, good strong creek line, nice broad um, frontage and there's heaps of dense, um, you know, dense sort of semi woodland I suppose you'd call it, a lot of lignum and um, there's farming properties either side of the creek so and this time of year there's a lot of lambing going on so the foxes are sort of well fed and in the district so you just got to get downwind from where you expect the foxes to come from and start your whistling from there so this creek's running along that way and the wind's blowing across this way so we're going to go up that way a fair way try a bit of whistling and then we can jump over the fence and come back up the creek on that way work the other side I've already seen one fox and it saw us straight away it probably copped the whiff of us earlier so we'll um, just keep trying I know there's a lot more foxes in this area than one so we should do all right whether we can get close enough to throw off a shot with a boomerang or not it's another story but we'll give it a go
just jumped over that terrible fence just to get a look at this thing here that is um, caught my eye. A few feathers. Oh, and a bit of a strange sort of a bunch here. It's like I don't even know what this is. They look like kind of like duck feathers. Probably like the tail of a duck and a fox has ripped off the end of it or it's been dead for a while not that long it's still got flesh flesh on the end of those uh, feather ends um, yeah I don't know kind of smells it smells a bit like a duck I think <coughs> yeah that's interesting Just, we're walking quite close to a channel, so it's likely it's likely that just behind us that way a um, a fox has managed to get a duck, and, um, nab it, and take it back to these bushes here. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting enough to talk about. This tree here, it's called a native apricot for obvious reasons. I guess the early settlers when they found it in fruit and starting to ripen, it looked the most like an apricot I suppose. But um, it doesn't taste like one. It tastes like a... Uh, mm. <laughs> like a bad capsicum. But they're a nice looking tree and they, I don't know if anything else eats the fruit or not, but it never seems to go sweet, even when it's nice and dark like that. And it's probably poisonous, so let spit that crap out. Um, yeah, and they get, they're, they're sort of big, oh, they might get about six or seven metres tall and they pull up about that height. Yeah, they've even got a half, a split in half. No seeds there. Looks pretty cool. Now if I knew more a bit more about bush tucker, I could say you could do something with those seeds, but I don't. So we'll just leave them alone. Assume everything is poisonous. Unless you know for sure. So don't eat native apricots. Now after quite a lot of walking and a fair bit of whistling, we finally did have some success in raising a fox, although the fox actually didn't hear us first, he was running past, and then we whistled him up. I slowed him down, he stopped to have a look at us, just watch what happens. Now I had quite a few factors working against me when this fox came out of nowhere, the wind was blowing right in my face, so when I threw the boomerangs, one lifted and one dropped and it just really affected their accuracy another thing was that the fox started on the other side of the fence so I couldn't throw it at it when he was close and another thing was that foxes are really cunning and he knew what I was doing by the second time I threw so uh, apart from all those factors I reckon I would have had a fair chance of hitting him <coughs> Now I'm just going to light a campfire because we've had a bit of a long afternoon and didn't really get a clear shot at any game but um, you know it's nice to have a cup of tea at the end of a hard day's work so I'm going to light this fire. I'm just going to use sticks and leaves and things like that. I've got a cigarette lighter but um, if you're in the bush and you're stuck with that paper and um, you happen to have some dry leaves available they're not a bad substitute, particularly if they're eucalyptus leaves. Good thing to remember, if it's been raining recently, which it has been here, 
You've got to look for leaves that are up off the ground because they're going to be the driest, of course. So um, this kind of stuff up here, even if it's just a few, will be enough to get the flame started and then it warms up the other leaves and dries them out and um, then they'll get going. So a spot like that, a couple of feet off the ground. I notice there's a good bunch of leaves over here. So that'll be really good. And then um, very thin sticks also from up, up off the ground a fair way, like that. And bring them in and then um, keep getting the thicker sticks even from up high. If you've, got, if you've got the luxury of some dead branches like that. Um, and then once, you know, once the sticks get to a certain size um, like that, they're going to burn for long enough to dry out a piece of wood that's, you know, that thick and thicker. So you'll be alright to use sticks close to the ground then. Because all these rules only apply if it's if it's winter time or it's just rained or something. So let's go and uh, take this bunch of stuff around to the spot where we're going to light up. Good thing too to light it over some dry dirt. I prefer to dig a hole with a shovel um, into some dry dirt, but I don't have a shovel with me. So I'll just light it on the surface here. It's not so bad. There's no fire danger in the winter time around these parts, so we can light it straight on the surface. So yeah, your leaves underneath, keep them dense. A few thin sticks on top. And then you can light it before you put all your big wood on, and then you throw your wood on as the flame gets away. That way you're not going to smother your fire. So, just keep the flame underneath your leaves, that way they'll keep lighting up. It's still a bit damp, but getting in and out. Right, getting a good, good fire going there now. So we can use some bit bigger logs. These are a bit wet, but that's okay. I'll dry out. And of course, it doesn't matter where you stand, the smoke's going to get in your eyes. <coughs> I'll get a few more bigger logs and we'll uh, get the billy on top of it and have ourselves a cup of tea. Well, thanks for watching the episode once again. Welcome to any new subscribers that have come on board. And don't forget to like and subscribe and all that sort of thing too. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Just give me out seven, my boomerang. Give me out seven, my